Hi, I'm Sam Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Tapped Inductor Based PWM Converter. Let me start off with the motivation for a tapped inductor configuration. Here I'm showing a basic buck converter. There is a switch, inductor, diode, output section. And let's consider the case in which the duty cycle is small. Here I'm showing the inductor current. This is when the switch is on. This is when the switch is off. It's a control signal. This is the switch, switch current. And this is uh, actually the diode current. Now when the duty cycle is small, then this becomes narrower and narrower. And we are going to get from the input sharp pulses like these. Now the problem with these sharp pulses are that the current will be high. Actually it's uh, seeing momentarily the output current. It's a high switching losses therefore and the high input current ripple will develop because of this sharp pulses and we are going to see a lot of ripple here at the input. So this is the rationale for the tapped inductor, which is trying to resolve these sharp pulses. Now, if we have these sharp pulses, then the RMS, we can calculate it. Here, this is the average current of this pulse, and I can express it as a function of the peak time the duty cycle. And then I can find the RMS, and I'm finding that the RMS is the average current this is the average coming from the input divided by its square root of d that is the shorter the d the higher the rms current so there is a problem here aside from the ripple so this is the basic configuration of a buck a tapped inductor buck we see that the diode is not connected here at the end but rather it's sort of a tap within the inductor this is in fact an auto transformer so I think the best way and the most intuitive approach to understand this is by actually expressing or showing this connection as a regular two-winding transformer, N to one, N will be the total, and one is this portion here. So this is the N to one transformer. And then I'm showing also the inductance. This is the inductor of this configuration here. So this is the basic replacement for the tapped inductor. It's the generic representation. Now we can look at the two states during the on time. The diode is not conducting, so in fact we see only the inductor. Here it is. This is the on time. And during the off time, there is no connection here. The diode is conducting to the output. But notice that this current here is in fact the inductor current. Here it is. This is the inductor current going into this N turn winding and then coming out at this winding times N because this is an N to one transformer. So if I look at the currents involved during the switch time, I see the regular buck behavior. This is this buck behavior. However, during the off time, the current here, the output current, and the current through the diode will be much larger, actually n times this, this if this is the peak of during the transition, here we get n times this peak, and then there is a drop and the slope here of course correspond to a lower inductance the reflected inductance to this secondary so this will be the shape and obviously the transfer function will be changed so let's have a look at the transfer function again i think the best way to approach it in an intuitive way is to look at the average voltage across the inductor is equal to L times the I dt when the I is the rate of raise of the average current. Let's say we are averaging it over a one cycle or a number of cycles. 
Now obviously, this di dt at steady state is zero because the average current is not going up and down. It's sort of a uh, level point. So this is zero, and consequently, the average voltage on an inductor in a PWM converter at steady state is zero. This can be used very conveniently to find out transfer functions. So here I'm doing it this way. Looking at the voltage across the inductor during the on time, we have V in on one side, we have V out on the other side, V in, V out. And then during the off time, during the off time we are going to have the output connected to this secondary reflected to this sort of primary, so it will be n times v out. So this is n times v out. So on one side we have v in minus v out, on the other side we have n v out. These area must be equal in order to obtain a zero average voltage. So this is the equation here, this is t on and t off, dividing it by the period it will be d on and d off. So, working it out, I find that V out to V in is D on, D on plus N, D off. And remember that in the case of a buck converter, V out to V in is just D on. And indeed, if N is one, so this is just the regular case, then D on plus D off, and we are talking about CCM, continuous current mode, D on plus D off is 1, so we get back what we are supposed to get for a regular buck converter. For a non-regular, uh, that is a, a tapped inductor buck converter, this is the transfer function, or I can express it uh, in this way. And this I've already said, that if N is 1, we get this expression. Now I can also extract from here the D on, which turns out to be this expression, or as a function of the voltage ratio, V out to V in, this is D on. And I've plotted it here. We see this is the regular back. The D as a function of V out, V in, is of course a straight line. While in the tap inductor, see that it goes, this is the red one, goes this way, okay? So that we get, for a given ratio, a higher D on value. For example, if V out to V in is 0.1, that's somewhere here, in the regular buck, uh, duty cycle will be 0.1. Now for a, a tapped inductor, assuming an N equal to 3, we find that the duty cycle is 0.25. That is, we are going to have a wider pulse to obtain the same 0.1 V out V in, and obviously the ripple will be lower and the RMS current will be lower. So this is the objective of the TEP inductor and this is how it's actually uh, doing it. Now there is another way we can uh, sort of tap the buck converter and this would be by putting the diode sort of back at its point, but in this case to connect the switch at a somewhere that tapped point. And again, in this case, I'm defining it n to 1. And what we are seeing here, again, I'm showing it as a two-winding transformer and uh, getting the average value on the inductor by looking at the voltage during on and off. And in this case, I'm getting this expression for D on as a function of uh, the tra voltage transfer ratio. And as you can see, it goes the other way around. This is here, we got it this way. That is, for a given transfer ratio, we got a higher duty cycle, while here, we're going to get a lower duty cycle. Now, when could something like this be useful? Well, if you work very close to one and you want a better resolution of duty cycle to uh, voltage transfer ratio, uh, you can actually use this thing. This may not be that useful as is uh, this case. Now obviously we can do the same thing with the boost. Here is the regular boost. This is a tapped inductor boost. Again, 
using the concept of a generic um, transformer, two winding transformer, I am getting this equivalent here, this, this equivalent circuit. And then during the on time, we see this circuit. During the off time, we see actually the regular circuit equating the voltage we have during the on time we have the input connected to this part of the inductor this portion here while during the off time we have it actually v in is connected to the inductor and to and the inductor to the output so in this case we have a sort of a gain between these two windings because the voltage here will be n times this voltage here which is v in so we have here n times v in during t on and v in and v out during t off again this is the equating the two volt second if you might you might say and from this i can get of course the transfer ratio and here it is this is again repeating the situation this is the equation and I'm getting here in this case I'm expressing V out to V in as a function of the duty cycle and what we see here is that in the case of the regular boost here it is this is now sort of reversed also please notice that I, the definition of n to 1 is very important of course you can define it any way you wish but if you're going to use these equations beware that uh, the, 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 what is the definition of n so again, for the regular boost, we're going to see uh, this type of a transfer function. This is now V out to V in as a function of D on. As D on goes up and up, uh, of course, the uh, voltage goes up. And this is because the transfer function of a boost is 1 over D off. This is 1 minus D on. So as D on approaches 1, D off approaches 0. And of course, this goes up. Now. In the case of the tapped inductor, we're going to see here a different transfer function and we see that we get actually a boost. That is, we get a higher voltage here uh, than for any given duty cycle, then we get it from the on. So you can actually get higher voltages when you use a tapped inductor. Now what about a back boost? Well, this is already a tapped inductor back boost. This is a back boost to have the diode here, regular back boost, but here i have putting it uh, to a sort of a midpoint here. Again, the definition here is N and 1. So again, I am replacing it by a two-winding transformer. This is the inductance. And lo and behold, if you look at it and redraw it, it is just a flyback. So a back boost with the tapped inductor is basically a non-isolated flyback. Now, what about the downside of the, the tapped inductor? I think the main problem with this approach is the leakage. Whatever you do, there'd always be a leakage between the primary and secondary or between the two parts of the tapped inductor. Now, this leakage causes a lot of trouble because once you turn it off the switch there's a current here there's energy here so you're going to have some oscillation because of the capacitance here the parasitic capacitance of the say MOSFET that we are using also there is a loss of energy here so this is I think the main problem with this tapped indu inductor approach so this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.